Right, so assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and a very good morning to everybody. Um, this is our third consultation for your um, project, which is due next week, Thursday. Um, so you have just over a week left. Um, we will have one more consultation on Thursday this week, just to kind of iron out any issues that you may you may still have pending that you want clarification on. So for today's session, I just uh, it's free for all. Uh, you can show me whatever you've got. You can ask me any questions because um, the thesis statement you have already developed, even um, group three who were supposed to show me their thesis statement last week after consultation on Thursday, the, the group stayed back and, and illustrated what their thesis statement was, which is sufficient. Um, so for today's session, um, I'm going to leave it to you to show me whatever you've got. And if you've got any questions that you want to um, ask me, you may. Um, but like I said, make it more of an original discussion of the corpus and the world building of the selected corpus. Don't convert this into a lecture of anything and everything connected to the corpus. OK, so that's the rule of thumb. Uh, that said, I would like to start with group four, um, Atira and friends. Uh, Dr. Obi presenting. Emily, please. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like it that you know, different group members take turn every week to show to show, um, you know, participation because then you're taking ownership of um, of the project. Go ahead, Emily. Uh, can you guys see the screen now? Yes. Yeah, um, so the crucial part that Kamaji plays in Shiliro's development as she explores the world of uh, just, just a second, you're echoing. Um, can everybody have their mics muted? And if you've got two devices, please mute the, the other one. Thank you. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, um, so we choose to narrow our presentations emphasize on Kamaji by highlighting one aspect of each world building uh, in Amit. So here is a, my map that will help us explain our ideas about how uh, Kamaji influenced Chihiro's character development. Uh, for this first one, the rule of rule of Kami, an aspect of Kamaji's world building that stresses the significance of responsibility and hard work is an intrinsic to Chihiro's growth and development. Uh, and then in the boiler room, Chihiro has her first contact with Kamaji who proceeds to educate her about the spiritual meaning of work right away. And then um, Kamaji, he acts as a father figure to Chihiro due to, uh, due to his wealth of knowledge and experience. As Chihiro was growing uh, as a character, he offered encouragement to her. Then the next thing we want to talk about is uh, how the film portrays Kamaji and how he deviates from the stereotypical wise old man. To the end, uh, we want to inject the concept of Sundere, a well-known graphic of Japanese society, as an example of the Sundere cliché, which is common in Japanese cinema, drama, and animation. And then we have Kamaji in Spirited Away, who is first very cold and distant with Chihiro, but who eventually warms up to her. And then for the next world building, which is the magical thing that Kamaji have gave to Chihiro, which is the ocean train ticket. Since the ticket demonstrates how Kamaji's act of goodwill gives Chihiro strength and motivates her to persevere in the face of the spirit world challenges, so that we've chosen to highlight its re relevance. And so that's all for our group. Okay, Emily, um, I, 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 and. I like the kind of components that you have identified, you and your team have identified here, but the script, you got, you can listen to the recording uh, when when um, the 
the recording has uh, been rendered and I, I send you all the video, but it's a little all over the place. I don't I don't get the thesis statement. What exactly that um, this this interaction between these two characters and all these elements that you have uh, you and your team have identified. Uh, I don't get the coherence between between them. Right. Uh, so please, please strengthen that. Um, and I'm interested. I'm I'm always looking for new, uh, the newness or the original um, angle that uh, you know that that the discussion is presenting. So this notion of the Sundari um, uh, culture, um, you know how, you know if you triangulate. In, if you triangulate the discussion, you've got Kamaji, you've got Chihiro. What is the thing that connects them? What is the thing that unifies them? Is it the world? Um, is it is it a shared sense of purpose? So all these settings, you know, that you have brought in the boiler room, uh, the railway ticket. These are these are elements of the narrative, which is great. But how does the elements of the narrative um, pushes the character development further between these two, pushes the interactions between them further? What is it that they share? Think about those aspects. I I'm not asking you to rework anything, but I'm asking you all to look at your script, right? Look at the presentation script and then ask yourself, how is it coherent? How is the the Elements that I'm introducing in this, we are introducing this. How are they unified? How are they connected? Okay, so have a look at that, and and um, I, I want to hear the revised version on Thursday. I'm not saying the elements are wrong or what, but I'm just saying the 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 introduction and the thesis statement is not unified, is not coherent as as it stands. All right, okay. OK, and in terms of presentation, um, what's with the two black uh, dots, you know, with the hands and the what's that about? Uh, it's one of the character in a spiritual way. It's the suit balls in Kamaji's boiler room. So is that something that will be discussed uh, in these elements or later on? Mm, I say later on, Doctor. OK. You know, uh, um, make, make you know, just like a, a storyteller will only put the most essential things in the story, be it a setting or a, uh, a minor character or a statement or a line, right? You must be purposeful in anything that you're putting on the slide, make it purposeful. Otherwise, take it out. If it's there, you need to. Um, address it in your presentation somehow right same as when you're writing a, the, the essay if you if you were converting this into an essay every single statement every single idea is there for a purpose if it's not necessary you will not bring it in that's why i say look at your script for your presentation look at your script write this out into into a form of a script don't do it off the cuff like that write it into a form of a script and then look at the script and, and ask yourself, is this necessary? Is these statements that we're making, are these statements necessary? You know, so that way you get you get a more polished presentation. There is coherence from the introduction right up to the conclusion. OK, but I'm, I'm very looking forward to to the session. So thank you very much. Uh, Group three, um, either Francesca or anybody else. Um, uh, one second, Dr. Will share screen.
Right. Good morning, Doctor. Morning. So, okay. So, um, so the our thesis statement is. Right, so our thesis statement is how has the dichotomy between the mundane world and the shadow world colored carry phrase growth and character develop development? So that's our thesis statement. So we have compared her life. We have compared Clary's life and uh, certain aspects of Clary in terms of the mundane world and after she went into the shadow world. So first, the first aspect that we'll be comparing is the awareness of the shadow world. So initially, she's unconscious of the shadow world. She's not aware and she leads a very mundane life. And then after her 18th birthday, she starts seeing signs of the shadow world, but she doesn't really recognize or understand them. So this leaves her in confusion. And then after she enters the shadow world, she begins to accept the reality of the shadow world, as in she gets, she understands that, okay, there's demons, there's angels, there are shadow hunters. And then she also starts to understand her role in this newfound shadow world. Then she learns to be a shadow. She accepts her identity, her identity as a shadow hunter, and um, uh, she, yeah, so she accepts it. Okay. So next, uh, we are going to talk about her skill set and knowledge. So while in the mundane world, Clary had a very limited set of practical skills, and her strength was in like artistic pursuits. She was more into poetry, uh, visual arts, and other creative ex uh, other creative expressions. And after she went into the shadow world, uh, her, her, the type of skills that she has has changed. So she has discovered her unique ability to draw powerful runes. And, um, and also she has also picked up uh, combat skills, which is uh, very much necessary in uh, fighting against demon and other dark forces. And then thirdly, we have the relationships. So initially in the mundane life, her mundane life is confined to all of her mundane relationships, which are her parent, uh, her mother um, and her friends. So her understanding of loyalty, trust, love, all these are based on her interactions with them, as in her blood ties and all her acquaintances and friends. Whereas in the shadow world, her, uh, she has made more connections with uh, other shadow hunters. So her relationships have become uh, more wider in a sense. And now her, she has to pledge her loyalty and uh, trust to her fellow shadow hunters. So she doesn't uh, necessarily have to have blood ties with them or be friends with them. So they come as a whole, as in the shadow hunters group. So she has to pledge their loyalty and every decision she makes ultimately affects them because they all have a shared goal now. And next we have identity. So initially, like I said, she was a normal teen. She was quite timid. She was quite shy. And now after becoming a shadow hunter, she has a new role and a new purpose. So she has no choice but to become more courageous and resilient. She has also, uh, eventually she becomes a bit more aggressive in the sense that she now has to fight against demons, she has to take a, a strong stand and things like that. And next we have moral framework. So in the mundane world, her life is governed by civil law and the human laws and, and the right and wrong is dictated by the ethical standards. And whereas in the shadow world, it kind of clashes with her mundane moral values and the human laws. For example, you can't kill anybody in the mundane world, but in the shadow world, you have no choice but to kill the demons. So this creates uh, somewhat of like a moral and ethical dilemma within her. So we believe this is like this is like a gray area in, mor in morality for Clary. And then uh, she discovers hidden truths that actually shake her moral stance. So when she finds out her father is bad, she actually, it shakes her moral stand and she has to now decide whether she wants to go with her father or she's going to take a decision that aligns with her moral values. And lastly, we have motivation. 
So initially her motivation was her passion for art and poetry and get into art school. But now after entering the shadow world, her mother is gone. So her new motivation is to retrieve the mortal cup and find her mother, Jocelyn. So these are the aspects that we're going to compare. And um, we also thought of touching on vulnerability. So we are we were quite torn between um, whether Clary has tapped into her vulnerability and has it become her strength, or has all the ugliness of the shadow world, all the deaths, all the killings have hardened her from within. But I think uh, we are still exploring this, but as of now, we believe that she has tapped into her vulnerability and that has actually become Clary's strength and has made her into a um a more a, a better shadow hunter because other shadow hunters they don't really value emotions they are very cut and right as in if i have to kill i have to kill and they make certain decisions without considering emotions whereas clary since she's been in the mundane world she actually leverages on those emotions and vulnerability and she takes certain decisions that actually uh, helps her to emerge as a better shadow hunter than everybody else so that is um, our progress for now. Okay, um, it's it's good progress. Um, if you go back to your first page, um, I, I'm sorry I'm hacking on the thesis statement with every group, um, but okay. I need you all to see that with mm -hmm. a stronger thesis statement, your presentation becomes truly impactful. Okay, so um, I'm saying the same that group four with group four, as, as with group three. So what you're showing us uh, here, what the group is showing us is more in a form of a research question, right? How has mm -hmm. the dichotomy between the mundane world and the shadow world colored this protagonist's growth and character development? So this is a good research question. In fact, I would break it up into two, but but that's that's aside. Now, but what is the thesis? What is the the problem that is being explored in this research. I don't see it here, but I heard about it in the conclusion. So let's go all the way down to the conclusion. Sometimes it works like that as well. I, I notice with my own essays, you know, when I'm writing journal papers or presentation, I find that sometimes I'm, I'm able to fine tune the thesis statement in the conclusion, because as I reach the conclusion, I know what exactly I want to uh, conclude with the impact of this re reading. If I look at that, I can develop a problem based on that and work backwards, right? So, so go all the way down to the conclusion. Yeah, somewhere here just now. Yeah. So you you talked about vulnerability, uh, and mm -hmm. there I noticed there is the element of uh, this this self-assured individual and empowerment. Uh, mm -hmm. There was something else. Um, how she uh, how she leverages on these uh, these elements these elements of her inner strength and her inner inner um, power if you like right sense of empowerment in the face of vulnerability now she was not faced with all that when she was in the mundane world she's still the same person but the environment has brought out the the unknown in her, the vulnerable in her. And in facing up to the unknown, facing up to the vulnerable, she is understanding her sense of self, her sense of being. Make that into a problem. That is what this entire presentation will explore and reaching to this conclusion. Does that make sense? So she, uh, yes, doctor. So it's like because yeah, because what I'm hearing from the session is when you're showing us the the input, it's it's very binary. It's very mundane versus shadow world, and and you're just juxtapositioning these two and saying that in the mundane world she was like this, in the shadow world she was like that. But mm -hmm. is there any um, any good in the mundane world that she you know she spent eighteen years there? Was there anything that she um, developed and, and upon coming into the shadow world, 
did she come clean slate? Like she had absolutely no skill set at all. And she came into the shadow world and suddenly she learned to be more vulnerable and she learned to develop her sense of empowerment. She learned to become more self-assured, courageous and, and service oriented. Does that mean the first 18 years was a waste? That she didn't acquire anything? So then it becomes a binary, like good, bad, black, mm -hmm. white right? Like very binary kind of a, a reading of uh, Clary's character growth, right? But because you said um, uh, earlier she was timid, then upon entering the shadow world, yes, she became more courageous, but she also became aggressive. Now, is aggressive necessarily positive or negative? Or is there a sense of ambivalence in it? You know, is shy and timid necessarily negative? Is it is there elements of uncertainty, right? So I, I want you, I want the group to explore that, not like a good bad binary, right? Rather mm -hmm. to to show that yes, the mundane world provides certain restrictions or did not provide her the kind of um, freedom to explore her true self that she didn't know about. And in the shadow world, she does know that, but her growth is also informed by the things she acquired in the mundane world, right? It's not like the mundane world did not give her any kind of skill set, life skills. She did develop certain things the first 18 years, but upon coming into the shadow world, her growth seemed to become more exponential because mm -hmm. of these you know, so so make the discussion a lot more complex rather than okay, this is all boring, boring, boring mundane world. Mm -hmm. This is all great fun uh in the in the what do you call this? In the shadow world, right? Because then it's it's very clinical. It's like, oh, this is all bad and this is all good, and that's the end of the story. No, it should be a little bit more discussion going on. So based on this conclusion. I can suggest certain thesis statement, but like I said, this is your presentation, your group's presentation. But if we, you, if you ever consider to convert this into a paper, then I will come in and, you know, rewrite it and help you work out the the thesis statement if we're going to collaborate. But for now, I will just say, I want to hear your thoughts, your group's thoughts on what is the thesis for this, uh, for this presentation. What you've shown us is a research question. It's not the thesis statement. The thesis statement is more like a hypothesis. What do I want to prove in this presentation? You already have the conclusion here. So develop a, a hypothesis based on this, right? What do you want to suggest? So it's okay. something like, yeah, maybe we will probably do something like uh, our thesis statement would be, sorry. So, Doctor, you want us to do something like how her her mundane life and her exposure to the shadow world has shaped her. Like how these two work in synergy to produce Clary as a good shadow hunter. Is that it? That you could make that into a thesis statement. I, I'm not asking you all to do it. I'm just looking I, at I know, what I know. you have shown us. I mean, that is I'm your suggestion. Saying, yeah, I'm because I'm, I'm saying you already uh -huh. have the conclusion now because you have uh -huh. the end. You need to start with a possible uh, discussion. What is the possible topic? What is the possible issue that you want to explore? Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you can end with this conclusion. Then it becomes more unified. Right now, the introduction is a little bit weak. And I'm not sure what exactly you are focusing on. But as the analysis progresses and reaches a conclusion, the audience gets, oh, okay, so this is what they want to do. But they didn't start with that. Mm -hmm. So so strengthen the introduction and make the analysis less clinical, less good, bad, black, good, evil kind of a binary, but make it more um, uh, that there are elements of the uncertainty in both contexts because you use the word aggressive. You didn't just use the word courageous in the shadow world. The very fact that the word is shadow right there is the element of the the you know unseen the darkness in the word shadow right it's not light 
it's shadow. So there is that the very element of the word shadow, uh, the words that we associate with shadow is not necessarily all positive. Right. So so in the shadow world, certain things are in the dark, certain things are left unknown, certain things are brought to the surface. So there is elements of the ambiguous in both contexts, in both the mundane and the shadow. So when you are showing us, for instance, the motivation, if you go back to the motivation, the, the section before. Now, what I saw was that in the mundane world, she was driven by her passion. Whereas in the shadow world, she had certain goals that she was um, uh, working towards uh, to retrieve the cup to find her mother. So it's it's not about her. It's about the service. So where is Clary in this, in this search to retrieve the cup and to find the mother? Where is she? Or else in the mundane world, she didn't lose herself, right? She knew what she was passionate about. And she went for that passion. So if you were give, if you all were given a choice to live in a world where your passion uh, was your main focus and another world in which the service was the main focus, which one would you choose? So, so the, the, the story is, in fact, inviting readers to participate and question. You know, there is elements of the ambiguous in both. In the shadow world, it, she's very much driven by, by service. There's a sense of purpose, right? But the purpose is external. It's not internal. It's not about finding joy in her life. It's not about finding her sense of purpose in, in this world. It's more about being of service. Now you're 18, you join the shadow world, you can start to serve. That's, that's what it sounds like to me, right? Having not seen the, show, the, the movie, but that's how it, it sounds like given the examples you all have shown. Whereas in the mundane world, what it appears was that she, she could explore her interests. She could explore her, um, her, her passion, her hobbies, her, her, uh, what makes her um, come alive, which is her art and poetry, right? So there is elements of um, the strengths and, and the weakness of both settings. And yet the story seems to kind of, um, you know, allow the reader an experience of the shadow world more rather than the mundane. But even as you explore the mundane world, don't ignore this, these strengths that the world provided, uh, Clary. Okay, Doctor. Yeah, I, I don't I don't mean to like, you know, add more work for you all, but I just feel that there's so much more depth in the analysis that you can you all can do, given that you have this. Mm -hmm. Now take it, take it slightly deeper and, and make the presentation more impactful. So the, the, the word we're looking for is ambivalence. That means the writer is not suggesting one world is better than the other. With a lot of these dystopian uh, stories. Would you consider this as a dystopian um, uh, story? Yeah, to some, yeah. yes, yes, we would. Yeah, so with a lot of the dystopian stories, it's not all good. There are elements of, um, of uncertainty and ambivalence in that world, which is why it's not a world that we aspire for, but it's a world that if we had a look at, we can understand why we appreciate the world we live in. You know, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. that there is that element. So I, I would like your group to kind of explore uh, that aspect further. Okay, sure. But, Thank you, but definitely the thesis statement. I want to hear the thesis statement on Thursday. Okay, sure, Doctor. All right. Thank you. Group Thank three. You. Um, Alina or Faris, are you all here? Shiro, are they here? I tried to call them, but only Faris uh, replied to me. Uh, he said he's having uh, trouble with his connection. Right. Okay. You know, if you all showed up, 
and you get consultation, you notice that your presentation becomes stronger, then it's a lot easier for you for you to score. Um, so it, that's the value of the consultations. All right. So finally, group one. Last week, Mimi presented and then Shira presented. OK, group one, who would like to go? Juliana? Yes, Doctor. Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Yes, now can. Okay, so doctor, we have decided to compare and contrast. But before anything, uh, I would like to show the thesis statement first. Okay. So the thesis statement is, uh, in comparing Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland 2010 with Lexus Carroll's original tale, it becomes evident that uh, Burton's adaptation offers a contemporary reinterpretation. So uh, Burton's re edition introduced a more explicit exploration of individuality and social norms, blending his unique uh, cinematic aesthetic with the timeless narrative elements and crafted by Lewis Carroll. So the comparison highlights how the interpretation uh, captures the essence of Carroll's classic while infusing it with modern sensibilities, creating a visually captivating and thematically rich cinematic experience. Brilliant. Okay, next. OK, so uh, the Wim skill setting of Wonderland first is the growth of adaption of protagonist Alice. So uh, the evidence to support this. So Alice's physical changes, both growing and shrinking during the narrative, also serve as a representation of this. So based on Carson 2011. So, also, so uh, um, just a second. Sorry. Carl's, Carlson 2011. Uh, is Carlson referring to the Tim Burton version or is the is it referring to um, um, Lewis Carroll's uh, original or the animation? Which one? Doctor is referring to the Lewis Carroll's version. Hmm. Okay. Read the article again. Just in case, just just because it's a year after the not the movie came out, Tim Burton's movie came out. Just have a read at the article again and see whether the conclusion Carlson 2011 reached. Um, okay, but just just read it, read it one more time, just in case. Okay, doctor. Because you know why? It's a little bit dated, uh, 2011, to, to make certain conclusions about the original story. Um, because that conclusion, yeah, I just feel, I just have a quick glance at Carlson's um, uh, article one more time. Okay, go on. Okay, then the second uh, supporting evidence would be these characters act as mirrors reflecting the various facets of individuality and the challenges people face when juggling social expectations. So based on Vital E Uh, is something missing in that sentence? Alice discovers a way of thinking and living in Wonderland that is very dissimilar from her own. A duchess who is committed to always 
looking for lesson in things. And then, is there a full stop? Trials that appear to be incredibly unfair. Um, the sentence seems um, fragmented. Because the coherence is missing. Anyway, so, so yeah. All right, moving on. Okay, then... Uh... So we have compared uh, between Tim Borton's movie in 2010 and Lewis Carroll's book. The themes, uh, the themes that have discovered is innocence, growing up, adventure, child versus adults. So these are the supporting evidence, evidence doctor. Okay. So this is, uh, you're basically doing a review of literature on past studies on both corpus, correct? Yes. Okay. You're not doing original research. At this stage, it's just a review of past studies, yeah? What others have said about the Tim Burton's um, uh, version and the original, right? And the comparison between narrative voices, then the characters. The plot. And then the world building picture, pictures. Uh, doctor. Yep. Uh, can I clarify a bit? Yep. So basically, uh, we are doing the compare and contrast mm -hmm. on themes and, and buttons and Carol's version mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the themes, which is, uh, it themes is one of the things that we are comparing and contrasting. Uh, as we all can see that buttons version is more to like self-discovery, rather than uh, Carol's version, which is, I think, more into like explore, exploring the fantastical realm. It doesn't show much about self-discovery. So since uh, uh, Burton's already revisioned the original version of Carol's, so I think she, he put, he put uh, some elements of self-discovery, uh, some, you know, the, the one that you told us to do, it, which is uh, use the journey. So we are uh, incorporating that kind of element in this comparing and contrasting. Not only like we uh, um, just only, we're not only focusing on the past studies, comparing on the past studies, but we, we also want to see whether uh, Carol's Burton's, I mean, Burton's version is more in deep compared to deep and dark compared to Carol's version, which is more uh, child, child uh, friendly. <laughs> you can get what I mean, Doctor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why, sorry, I, I want you all to finish your presentation first. If there's anything else you want to say before I... I question certain things. I but I hear you, Shira. I hear what you're saying. So yeah. All right, that's it. Juliana, did you want to continue? Is there anything else you want to add? Juliana, are you, are you presenting right now? Yes, doctor. Okay. Did you want to say something else? Yes, okay, so this is the compare and contrast, the element of fairy tales, the similarities and the differences.
Okay, anything else? I think that's all of them. Okay. So this is this is where um, I keep repeating my my initial comments, which is don't make this into a lecture where you put in anything and everything that you have gathered. You the group has gathered uh, with regards to the corpus that you have identified. Right? Um, you've got uh, you know comparing the two corpus. You've got now in this section compare and contrast looking at elements of fairy tales and earlier on you have the the difference in themes and different and characters character development but if you go to your first page the one that you showed us the thesis statement i feel like you know where where group three showed us a strong conclusion and I'm asking them to develop a thesis statement based on that. Group four, sorry, group one um, has a very clear thesis statement. And within the thesis statement, they have also identified the methodology of which they want to explore Burton's um, um, revisioning of Lewis Carroll's classic. And let me let me identify that. It says here that um, uh, it becomes clear that Burton's adaptation offers a contemporary reinterpretation, emphasizing on themes of self-discovery, empowerment, and societal critique against the backdrop of his signature dark and whimsical uh, visual style. Um, and also that Burton's rendition introduces a more explicit exploration of individuality, so hence self-discovery, and societal norms, blending his unique cinematic aesthetic with the timeless narrative elements crafted by Lewis Carroll. Now, based on this thesis statement, you should develop your methodology. Instead, if you can go down, Juliana, go, go down the page. So you, you should look at self-discovery, empowerment, societal critique as the methodology of how you analyze the corpus. Okay, go down. So then, then the similarity and the differences of elements of fairy tales. And if you go up to the themes, can you go back up to the, the first, uh, first table? Yeah, this one. So earlier you said Tim Burton's uh, rendition focuses on self-discovery, -dis empowerment, societal critique. Then suddenly here you've got innocence and, and growing up adventures, child versus adult. You're, you're confusing the audience by bringing in something else, right? Instead, this uh, first slide, if you like, this can be the literature review or past studies or what others have said about the corpus, because this is very much what others have said, right? Now, based on what others have said, you can then identify the thesis of your presentation. What exactly will you focus on? You're focusing on how Tim Burton um, explores self-discovery, empowerment, and societal critique in his uh, gothic rendition of this, this classic. Then you go straight into it. Look into elements of individuality in Tim Burton's um, uh, version. Look for um, uh, um, elements of uh, societal critique. Look for elements of um, uh, empowerment. Right. Look for these elements. Don't break it down to uh, within the the world that is being created by Tim Burton. Because this is the thesis statement. And use the thesis statement to guide your presentation. Don't go do something else. Fear not. Uh, one. Wendy, yes. Uh, we have to focus on the 
exploration of individual, uh, individuality and then uh, the societal norms or the critics and the sorry I've, I lost you that, that it's it's all there Wendy you all have written it in the second paragraph the empowerment the empowerment you, is it? you have identified it in, I'm just picking up what you have said you are planning to do in this presentation right it's all there self emphasizing on the themes of self-discovery empowerment and societal critique right so where in the corpus, in the movie, do you see elements of self-discovery, empowerment, and societal critique? That's what your presentation should show us. But these themes are presented through the world that Tim Burton creates. And that's why world building is an important narrative character, narrative feature. Because if you, if you want to rework the thesis statement, you still can. But I'm saying to you what you have there, that's what you should do in your analysis. Don't go do something different. Doctor, uh, so the themes that uh, we have showed you earlier could be the past, sorry, the literature review for our paper. And yes. though uh, literature review by meaning that we are going to further expand, sorry, not further uh, look up for the relevant papers and then uh, where, where they touch on the ele the elements the themes and then after that only we further continue with other things which is the one that it's below if if you were gonna if you're gonna do this into a script and if the first paragraph that you have on this page lewis carroll's um timeless tale alice in wonderland has captivated audience with its whimsical and fantastical setting in Tim Burton's 2010 live action adaptation, the Wonderland presented is not merely a backdrop, it becomes a dynamic force influencing character development and propelling the plot forward. Next par paragraph should be that table, the first table just now that you showed us of the different themes that others have identified. Make that a second paragraph. Meaning this is what past studies have demonstrated about these two coppers. Then the third paragraph should be in comparing timber. Yeah, this this whole thing, this whole thing that you have here, I would make this into a paragraph, maybe two paragraphs. Make that as uh, following that that first paragraph that you had as the introduction. Then you come into your thesis statement. Does that make does does that make sense? Okay, and it's still already Doctor. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not I'm yeah, not okay. giving you anything new because this is still your presentation and, and I'm I'm evaluating you. But if this was converted into a paper, I would say just take this part and make it your your second paragraph. Because in the second paragraph, you're telling us what others have already said about these two coppers. But the gap lies in discussing of self-discovery, empowerment, and societal critique, as you have identified. I'm not putting words into your mouth. I'm just using what you have identified. Is that is that clear? Yes, doctor. Thank you very yeah. much. So, so when yes, you doctor. go into your analysis, don't do something else. Do what you promised to do in the thesis statement. That's what the thesis statement is for. For us to know exactly what you plan to do and for us to then see that in your presentation. Right? So a good presentation will have a clear thesis statement and that thesis statement guides through the methodology and the, and the analysis. And of course, the, the conclusion will reiterate the thesis statement and expand the impact of your um, presentation. So rule of thumb, if it doesn't adhere to the thesis statement, take it out. You know, if, if the thesis statement does not talk about the, the, the genre, right, take it out. But if the thesis statement talks about the genre, you know, you're, you're saying that um, uh, Burton's version is more gothic, whereas um, uh, Lewis Carroll's version is more of a fairy tale. But is that fairy tale completely removed in Burton's version or the gothic elements comes in? If that is part of your thesis statement, if it's an important part, 
right? When you say his signature dark, whimsical uh, visual style. So I'm assuming you, you want to um, touch on his gothic element, right? Then, then definitely make sure you have that in your presentation. Otherwise, um, it becomes too much like a lecture, like I said. Okay. Okay, doctor. Right. Any, any, um, anything else? I, Faris kept coming in just now. Is Faris here or Alia? Let's see. Shira, do you see Faris anywhere uh, in online? No. All right. Because he tried coming in and, and, and I admitted him yeah. twice. Um, but OK. All right. Any other questions, anyone? Any questions? Just to, to um, sum up, I think um, the presentation is definitely coming along well for all three groups. Uh, you have very clear um, uh, ideas of what you want to share in terms of your slides, your content of your presentation. What I'm suggesting is uh, for all three groups to prepare a script. You know, and the script can be in a form of like a, an essay of some sort with an introduction, a body of analysis and your conclusion and and create a coherence for your introduction, body of uh, essay, as well as the conclusion. Make make the discussion coherent from the beginning till the end. That way, uh, group members will know, OK, this is what we are, our presentation is about. And, and whoever is preparing the slides will also be able to have a clear sense of coherence between slide one, two, three, four, and so on. Because what you don't want it to be that, you know, you've got a very clear uh, script, but the slide comes across as if you're putting anything and everything. You know, like anything and everything comes into it because we found this great input about, uh, about the said coppers, you know? Um, yeah, so, so, create a more focused presentation and, and that will make your presentation more impactful because you have something to say about the corpus. Not you have a lot of things to say. You have that one issue that you want to explore, the thesis, and that's what will, will govern the entire presentation. All right. Um, if there are no questions, I can uh, set you all off. Um, I will see you Thursday for your final consultation. Doctor? Yes? Uh, Who's sorry, this? this is Bella. Yes. Uh, I'm from Prabalina's group. Group so, three, yeah. Okay, so um, we just discussed just now and we came up with a few um, uh thesis statement so maybe you can have a look at this and go ahead uh, go ahead okay so she is screen sharing wait a second Uh, are you all sharing screen? Yeah, we're trying. To, can you see? Like, per no. Anybody else? Can you all see? Okay. Ah, okay. Now, now it's coming. Uh, okay. So, um, down below here is the thesis statement. So we have come come up with like four thesis statement, four, four different thesis statement. So the first one is from Farahin, Clary's innate goodness from the mundane world transforms and challenges norms in the shadow world. 
and previously suggested Clary's ambivalence about the mundane and shadow world serves a stepping stone to her journey of emerging as a competent shadow hunter. And I suggested that since Clary Frey has both contrasts like complementarity between her mundane life and experiences in the shadow world, so it's kind of like yin and yang, yin and yang so it like complements each other. The dichotomy shapes her personality, which illustrates how elements from both realms combine to forge a unique and new Clary Frey that we get to know it by the end of the movie. And then the last one is from Navina, which is exploring how Clary's mundane life contributed to her resilience in Shadow World through different aspects of her life. So what do you think? You know, each one of this is four essays. It becomes four different essays. You can write four journal papers based on that because because the focus is different. Each one is good. Each one will have different um, findings and will have uh, will have different uh, discussions, right. you know. So you all have to decide what exactly do you all want to talk about? Um, because, because they are all equally good. Okay. And, and it depends on what the group wants this particular presentation to be about. This is this is why I say don't cram everything into one hoping to do like like a mega presentation. Don't do that. So what you want to do is that that you know pick the one that is strongest based on your data that you have, based on on uh, the the consensus of the group. And just work with that. Later on, any any of you may choose to explore this and make into a, a paper for yourself, and choose any one of the other thesis statement. That's that's a possibility, which is why one single corpus you can write a few journal articles. You know, it's not like one corpus, one thesis. It's not like that. But any of these can can be the the thesis of your presentation. Okay, so anyone. Any uh, which resonates with us? Yeah, you all have to discuss uh, as a group. All right. Because because are you focusing on uh, like uh, Navina's point? Are you focusing on uh, Clary's um, growth and her resilience? And uh, yours, Bella, are you focusing on uh, the the setting and how the setting, um, you know, is how it either complements or helps shape, then you're looking at environment, right? That's yours. Um, previous, um, uh, if Navinas is suggesting ambivalence, uh, sorry, uh, resilience, Pruvi is suggesting ambivalence, right? So so in Pruvi's thesis statement, the discussion will show a kind of a discussion element, uncertainty, right? Whereas with Navinas presentation, it will be clear that you're going to show there is resilience. There is a development of resilient character because Clary is going through uh, this journey, right? Farahins is um, Farahins would be to tap into how Clary's character is in the mundane world, the element of the innate goodness, and and the word shadow. The minute the minute you bring it into the shadow world, how does the innate goodness gets transformed? So that's different, mm -hmm. right? So all four is equally good, but it, it all depends on, you see now, I think this is a brilliant exercise that you all have done, which is to ask each member, what do you think this presentation is about? Now, if you think about it, all of you, all four of you here, you all are thinking different things. You're focusing on different things. Now you have to sit and ask yourself, okay, listen, which one do we want to do? Which one resonates with the whole big Which picture? one resonates with us and which one is the one that we see the data clearly? Okay. So with Farahin's uh, uh, one is you're comparing Clary pre-shadow world and Clary in the shadow world. Uh, with Previna's Previna discussion, you're also you know, there is a little bit of compare and contrast, but you're focusing more on the uncertainties, the ambivalence of uh, the growth, that she's not altogether happy here and she's not altogether happy there, right? With yours, you are looking at how the environment, that, that's a second character, that's an 
impacting her growth. With Navina's, it's, it's that element of grit, that she's going through all this. That's very much the hero's quest, right? You're going through all this, and in going through this, you develop a sense of resilience. So they're all good. And I think I would encourage the other groups to do the same, like get the group members to actually say what they think the thesis statement is, right? Then develop a consensus. Okay? All right, Doctor, thank you. But well done, brilliant. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other group that uh, wants to ask any question or raise any concerns? So next Thursday's presentation, each of you will be given a maximum of 15 minutes. OK. Um, I would like to have it recorded. So I'm I'm leaning towards doing this online just so that I could get it recorded. But I'm fine with face to face. So we will discuss this on Thursday, whether you all want to do it uh, face to face or online. OK. All right, so if there's no no other question, I will see you on Thursday for our final consultation uh, for your uh, project. Is, Thank you, Doctor. Um, sorry, is group two anybody from group two? Faris, you're here. Faris? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you have anything to present on behalf of your group? Uh, I'm sorry, Daddy, because I'm the only one in the group in, in this class today. All my I group know. members not present. Yeah. So but I do you have anything to share? Do you have anything to share? Uh, so far, I think no, Daddy. Okay, can you please speak with your group mates and tell them I want to see you all tomorrow? Okay, you Make an appointment to see, to see me. Yes, I want to see uh, you all tomorrow. Face to face, sir. Doesn't matter, online or face to face. I need to see your group's progress tomorrow before your final consultation on Thursday. Okay. Okay. okay I'm going to put you in charge of um, uh, getting everybody together and uh, doing your consult tomorrow. Okay. Okay? okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, doctor. doctor, I want to see you after this meeting. For my FYP.